So we've set up several gyms. We've failed at gym business. We had to close one. Uh, we've opened, we've had landlords kick us out for dropping bumpers. We've had landlords drop us out for playing the music too loud. We had landlords kick us out because we were stealing all their customers is what they said. I'm here to tell you, my vote is that you build your own dojo. What's up everybody, welcome to the uh, little elk-shaped backyard gym. We wanted to give you guys kind of an exclusive look at where we train here at my house and also kind of fill in the gaps as to like what equipment we bought first, what mistakes we made, why we trained at a home gym, our background, our story, just so you get some context. But uh, by the end of this video, you should have a good idea of like a hierarchy of shoulds, musts, and uh, kind of weigh and decipher what's gonna make most sense for your home gym so that you can also eliminate excuses, crush workouts, and spend more time at home with your family. First things first, the space is, this one is 30 by 40. And when we originally decided to build a shop, we thought like maybe just this section was gonna be our gym. It didn't turn out that way. When we started figuring out all the things we wanted to do inside our gym, and we wanted to have friends to be able to work out with us. So, you don't need this biggest space. We trained out of a single car garage for several years until we built this shop. Since I've started training at home, I don't necessarily miss having to drive 20, 30 minutes through traffic and fight other people, not really, but fight for equipment. A lot of time spent traveling to and from at a normal gym. Whereas now, if I got an extra 20, 30 minutes, I'm gonna sneak out here and win the day. And for a lot of you, that should make sense because you don't know how you're gonna make up time in your day because you're already spread too thin. Create a home gym, get up a little earlier, or even like eliminate TV time in the evening and just do a workout. As long as you know what you're training for, as long as you know your why. Okay, so the first thing my gym needed was a heater. We live two hours from Canada. It's freaking cold in the winter, man. And these barbells, even if you have a heater, my bar is cold right now. It's kind of a luxury, but our previous garage gym did not have a heater. So we're talking multiple layers of clothing and gloves. Once you got warmed up, you could take off your puffy and just slowly strip your way down to a normal workout outfit. Uh, but down here is a dumbbell rack. I don't think everybody needs dumbbells from 100 down to fives. I like dumbbells and you can get them used on Facebook Marketplace or even like your normal Target, Walmart, Dicks. They, they'll have dumbbells for you. If you're gonna order them online, you're gonna pay, you're gonna pay for shipping. Freight's not cheap. If you're just starting out, all you need is a pair of 50s or 35s and you're good to go. Uh, I do like a dumbbell rack to get them up off the floor and I do like dumbbells. If I had to pick between a barbell and a dumbbell, I'm gonna pick a dumbbell, they're just more versatile. Over here, we have a storage rack system from Rep Fitness. We have our 45s, our slam balls. These are 150 and 100. Sandbags weighing 80, 50, and then a couple of medicine balls, some 30s, some 10s, some small fractional plates for when we're doing weightlifting and we're just trying to outlift the last time. You can bump up there. Barbell collars. Crossover symmetry, these are hip halos. We use these a ton in our warm-ups to strengthen the hips, accessory pieces. Kettlebells, we got them ranging from 15 pounds up to 90 pounds. These are cool. It's like a little push-up, perfect push-up thing. Um, you can get these anywhere, but man, do they make a difference in working on your per uh, perfect push-up. More slam balls, 50s and 70s. Um, some balance discs, some ab support or ab mats some blocks, lifting blocks. We'll do a lot of knees over toes protocols for in our warm up. And then down here we have more place and more medicine balls. These are fives, tens, 15s, 25, 35s. And these all weigh 14 to 20 and a couple of weight vests. But this one is from 511 Tactical, a couple other ones back there, a safety squat bar, all sorts of bands and speed ropes, mop, and a banner that we need to put up. Got the roll away door. I'll show you the next side after this set. We're just warming up our deadlift today. We're kind of working on under duress strength training. So we're doing a 20 cal row immediately into five deads, 
five rounds with a little bit of rest in between each round and we're bumping up the percentage of the deadlift and then wind up about 85%, which is in the good spot. We're gonna do max reps at that. It's all based off on one rep max. This is all off the elk shape training program. Then we have a pretty nasty conditioning piece, which is four three minute AMRAPs. One of those ones where you'll pick up where you left off with very little rest in between. We'll show you that. Monostructural pieces. So this is concept two, rowers. Love the rower. This is a $40 garage sale, like winning at life. Main, I probably could never do that again. And then these are full retail ones. So they're about a thousand bucks to get to your house. But I like the rowers. I'll show you our other monostructurals in a second. A couple of smaller soft plyo boxes from Rep. We really like a lot of our neighbors are in their 50s and 60s and they work out here for free. And they, uh, they'll use those on their step ups. They don't do box jumps. Um, the kids will play on those. We'll do some like box squats off of them. And you can also do some push up variations off the plyo boxes. GHG sit ups, man. GHD raises. This is just a great posterior chain device. They take up a lot of real estate. So if you were in a small space, this is not like a must, it's a should, but I, I certainly use this every week. So we have a pair of those. And then we have the reverse hyper, which I'm gonna do a couple sets here in a second, just to kind of warm up the posterior chain. If you ever have any back injuries, please check out Westside Barbell reverse hyper, unbelievable. We have two benches that can also move up to an incline, and I noticed that Rep Fitness now has one that can do declines, which is great. And then we got the Concept 2 Bike Ergs, which is probably my number one pick. If you're gonna get anything monostructural, I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest this one, because you can ramp it up and go crazy and get some great intensity pieces. And you also can do some long, slow distance and zone two stuff. I mean, Jeff behind the camera's training for a 100 mile mountain bike race. I know he's putting a ton of time on here just to build the engine. Obviously, that's not gonna transfer to a mountain bike race, that's endurance, but it's going to help build the engine, which is what he'll be leaning on. I'll catch you on the next set. Let's talk about flooring. A lot of home gyms, and even when I owned a CrossFit gym, I would buy five by seven, half inch thick, horse stall mats or four by six, three quarter inch thick horse stall mats. They're really tough to keep together. They're always kind of separates like a moving floor. I hated it. So what we decided to do is go and we order, I think this is eight or 10 millimeter thick uh, rolls of flooring and we actually glued it down in, on the concrete and it's very seamless, it doesn't move. So flooring is gonna be expensive, but I definitely wouldn't skimp on it. Get the thickest rubber you can and get them in the biggest pieces you can. Uh, but if you're on a budget, you can always go to like your, you know, farm and feed store and just buy a horse stall mat. We'll move over to the back half over here. So we have a his and hers locker in here. We'll keep all of uh, what I would call just like different stuff. Like I have weightlifting shoes, a weightlifting belt, my speed rope, a couple different pairs of the Savage ones from Born Printed. That's my favorite workout shoe. Rolls of tape for taping up my thumbs and uh, just little, little wraps for when you're doing lots of pull-ups. This is my wife's locker. And then place for our friends to keep their shoes, some supplements from Wilderness Athlete, the large plyo boxes, they're the soft ones, and then the hard plyo boxes. And if you have a choice, I would strongly recommend the soft over the wood ones. You can always make your own wood ones. There's The schematics are online for free. I've built them before. All you need is some screws, a good table saw, some carpenter glue, and measure twice, cut once. Over here is uh, the fan bikes, which I'm not a big fan of fan bikes. They suck. They take the, the life out of me, but these things produce the most lactic acid out of anything in this gym. So if you're a glutton for punishment, get yourself a fan bike. The difference between the Assault Bike and the Rogue Echo Bike is pretty different. Um, I believe their fan is bigger over here on the Rogue, and this has more of a flywheel vibe where you are gonna get it going a lot faster, but it's gonna take more to stay on it. Whereas with the Rogue, I think you can pace a little bit more, but both kind of equally suck in their own right. And then the Ski Ergs, Probably like my favorite monostructural piece because it is total body and you can really ramp it up to where you're using your legs, your back, your lats, your shoulders. Uh, and it's got that kinetic chain where you're kind of going from core to extremity down. So this is such a good piece and it doesn't take up a lot of real estate, which is, which is huge. Real estate's a premium in your garage gym. We also have some ropes for undulation. I don't think we use these as much in actual workouts as we should, but we definitely use them in our warm-ups, and uh, it's just a great piece. And then we have these rigs, 
set up to where multiple people can do pull-ups. The one problem is that my wife and I are not tall, so any tall people that work out with us, I haven't made a tall one yet, but then we have our wall ball targets, which I'll be using in today's workout. You'll see we have 30 pound wall balls prescribed today, which is a little heavier than normal. Then we got your squat rack with your J cup, and then you can get different attachments like this rep dip bar attachment. I was doing L sits on this yesterday. You can bang out bar dips and you can still squat in here and do all that. So we have kind of like two stations for wall balls. I'll tell you about some of these animals in here too when I'm done working out. Another squat station, and then we have some ab mat crash pads. One thing to note is, I think I've told a few people this that come in that if you're gonna lift super heavy weight, don't drop it on this floor because eventually it'll break your concrete. Uh, so we use crash pads a lot of times when we're doing Olympic weightlifting and we're gonna drop from overhead, even with bumpers. It's just to protect the longevity of the floor, get some crash pads. I'm probably gonna order another set down the road. And then we have these gymnastic mats that are great for when you're doing core work, crossover symmetry bands. Dude, these are where it's at for injury prevention. And shameless plug, discount code Oakshape, 20% off. Get the whole shoulder kit, get the hip halo kit. Especially if you're an archery enthusiast like me, stay off the sidelines, do your due diligence. A couple of rope climbs, and then this is a cool pull-up bar attachment. Try doing pull-ups on these balls here. It'll get your forearms just wrecked. We also have a couple more cool attachments for different types of pull-ups. And then we have our bodybuilding mirror so we can practice our poses. That's a joke. And um, that's pretty much it. We have two sets of rope climbs, two sets of gymnastic rings for ring dips and bar, or ring muscle ups and skin the cats and all sorts of fun stuff. Now I'm gonna head into the workout. I, I want you to build your own dojo. It sets you up for success because you have limited excuses when it's in your yard. There's <laughs> always 30 minutes to come in and break a sweat, so. Yeah, so we're doing functional training. We're following the Elk Shape Training Program. Um, I write most of the programming for the Limitless Track, which is the full gym. And then Jeff also, uh, Jeff Dodds writes the Hustle Track, which mirrors the Limitless, but it's more like, hey, I only have a pair of dumbbells and a jump rope, or a plyo box and a sandbag. So it's similar programming, just different program meets. It's awesome. So check it out if you want and join our awesome community. It's, it's like no fluff, no nonsense, just awesome community. Now, as far as the height of your ceiling, I wanted to go high. What did we end up going? I think we did 16 Yeah. Feet? Yeah. Well, it's 15 feet to the top of that beam for a rope climb, and then we got more feet. So when we finished this gym out, we hired someone to do the pole building and the pour the concrete. And then we hired someone to insulate the ceiling. We could not afford spray insulation. If you can afford spray foam, I would recommend it, but it wasn't in our budget. We had already blown our budget actually quite a bit. So then we finished it with OSB insulation, and then we painted the walls and the beams. The beams on a pole barn will suck all your paint up and then some. So just keep that in mind. And then we paid good money for good garage doors so that we can roll them up. Like this is an extra, extra large 14 foot garage door and then down there's a smaller one but here's our secret that you guys have some of you have asked on the main channel in my dms let's head over to the wall and tell them our secret okay. we get a lot of compliments on this wall this accent wall and before we had this up it looked pretty blah yeah looking at photos old photos or videos from in here i'm like oh my gosh this was such a good idea so um it's not shiplap no it's I... not barn wood <laughs> It's actually laminate flooring. So I came up with this idea because I just thought, well, why wouldn't this work? Like shoot a nail through there. And then um, my father-in-law, Dan's dad said, you should put some glue on there. So we got like the big tubs of glue and slapped the back. Glue. And, yeah, construction glue. And, and 
It was not easy, but man, it has changed this space. Lots of hammering, getting yeah. it to click, yep. tongue and groove, and honestly, scaffolding. If I were to do it again, I probably would end up cutting the lips off of the laminate. They have like a tongue and groove finish. I would probably table saw. If I didn't have a huge space to do, I'd probably cut all the lips off and then you could run them tight together and you wouldn't have to worry about trying to click them in because sometimes that was a hassle. But um, I really like how we finished it off. We put this quarter round in the corners um, next to the beams and I just burned this um, with my torch and so I didn't Same have to on stain them or the anything. Lip. Yeah, and we burned those top pieces um, for a trim piece. I'm glad we didn't go all the way to the top because it kept it keeps it light in here but still gives it like a good aesthetic but really you know we're filming in here and so we wanted it to look cool but when you're trying to build a home gym like literally focus on the basics I would say first and foremost is the flooring that's really an important piece of your home gym last but not least I was gonna share them some of these animals but Alicia's killed so come on over I'll show you uh, this is this is uh, Idaho black bear it is definitely my best it's the only one I've ever fully rugged out and it is a Pope and Young skull. It's in the high 19s. I did shoot him over bait, and the crazy story with that one is that he, he came into a bait that had no boars. It had a sow with two, what I call like little baby cubs, the kind you wanna just pick up and cuddle and hold with. And I noticed on trail camera that the mom started showing up with only one. So I figured the other one got killed. And then the very next day he showed up uh, and then when I killed him, the night he showed up, the only remaining cub, he came into the bait first without his mom. And then he looked around and then he took off running for his life. And I was like, oh man, something's big coming. And it was this waddler. And he was a waddler, big bear. Um, I shot him at 30. And then we found him the next day and it took four of us to pick him up and get him in the side by side. This is a Boone and Crockett mountain lion. I'll never kill a mountain lion that big again. I uh, got it in Idaho, north of Sandpoint, um, with a buddy of mine who has dogs, and uh, he's actually an outfitter, and I just made a deal with him where I was like, hey bro, like I ain't gonna pay you seven grand to hunt with you for a week, but if you have any clients cancel, or if you get a fresh snow and you have no one to be a hunter, here's my number, I will drop everything and show up. And then he didn't call me for three years, and then just one day I was getting ready to go to the gym to open up the gym, I got a call from him and he's like, hey, I'm on a giant lion track. I have no hunter. Can you come get it? And I was like, hold my beer. And I ended up killing him that day. And mountain lion meat is the bomb. It's the other white meat, man. And I'm serious, like table fair, mountain lion is like probably one of my all time favorite meats. Over here is a bunch of white tails. I think we got two muleys up there. So I, I do, I have killed some mule deer. I'm primarily a white tail hunter. Favorite buck is definitely the one mounted right here. I think he's a 150 class mountain buck public land hunted him for three years, and just one hell of a pack out for a whitetail. Drug him out whole in the snow for miles. A couple of antelope, I love antelope meat. That's a, that's a Montana antelope, that's a Wyoming antelope, but the rest of these deer are primarily Washington State whitetail. That's my first whitetail, yeah, that's my first whitetail I ever killed up there in the top part. And then I got some more antelope. I killed this caribou when I was 21 by myself. It's one of my very first bow kills. Uh, it was a drop-off hunt in North Slope of Alaska. I talked some pilot into transporting me and then giving me a radio and then I told him to pick me up a week later. Got a big old Idaho moose over there, giant paddles. The majority of this whole row is Idaho bulls. And then in the second row over, just a quick glance I could tell you, most of those are Idaho and Montana bulls. And then this last row we got, that was my first Idaho archery herd bull, seven by seven. That's a Washington State bull. Uh, that's an Idaho October bull. That is a New Mexico bull. That is a New Mexico bull. And that is a Utah bull. See, I do know about, I know. How do you remember? I just, I remember because it matters to me. I could tell you the time of day, the shot distance, the recovery. I could tell you what the bugle was like. Like these animals mean a lot to me and I honor them and their memory up here. Uh, it's not an ego thing. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not, not into trophy rooms per se, but I'm definitely into memory rooms. So it's kind of like a place to keep memories. Guys, build yourself a home gym. Do it on the cheap, but tell you what, man, and my wife's gonna be on this video. I've said it before, like, hey, we have budgeted our asses off to afford this place. I mean, Dave Ramsey style 
for, for probably 11 years making very little money, but saving pension pennies and delayed gratification. So I feel like if we can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah. So believe that and just know that it is nice. If you're thinking it must be nice, it is nice. And we say that every time we leave this gym, we're like, damn, how lucky are we? Subscribe, this channel is about to blow up and you were one of the first ones to be here. Thank you.